Yeah, if you take out one, like remember we 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 didn't have Ivan against Liverpool. We beat them three one. Yeah, yeah. Liverpool. Yeah, fans, man. You had to remind <laughs> us about that one. You know, raise that one from the memory. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's how like that's how well drilled we are and 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 good we are as a team. Hello listeners and welcome back to another episode of the Beautiful Game Podcast. I'm your host Thor, I'm with my right hand man Dej. What are you saying to me bro? I'm good my bro, I'm happy to be here. You know, this episode has been a while in waiting. I know you've done an Instagram live with him and that was <laughs> dope. So it's good to get the, you know, full TBG treatment now. So yeah, looking forward to nah, it. Definitely, after that Insta Live, Brentford fans were like bro, that insight that we had was incredible. But before we introduce our guests, I just want to plug our socials at pod underscore TBG on Instagram, at podcast underscore TBG on Twitter and TBG pod on TikTok. And before we start, I just want to plug um, SPKD. Obviously, Brit was nice enough to gift us some hats. And this is the first time I'm wearing a hat in like 20 years. So <laughs> <laughs> the man them are going to get on to you, man. Definitely. The group chat is going to be mad. <laughs> but no, we're delighted to announce we are joined with Brentford midfielder, my bro, Josh <laughs> De Silva. Welcome, 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 welcome. Cheers, man. That was, that was nice. Yeah? That was nice. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, man. We've been trying to do this one for years. Yeah. We've got the big boss in the background. <laughs> wants to say low key, so let's let's get this started. <laughs> so, yeah, let's let's take it back to the beginning. Strip it all off. Who's Josh De Silva? Um, yeah, just just a, uh, a guy. Grew up in Tiptree, uh, in a state. With uh, two brothers, two sisters, mum, dad. Um, yeah, and just loved. To be fair, I loved watching football. So my my older brother, I uh, always used to chill with him, and he always be watching match of the day, uh, or, or even playing himself. So he would take me to uh, for all the park is, but he played for for, for a Saturday team, and he'll take me, and I just watch. I watch a lot of football, and. Um, and then, yeah, just we, we had like a play area just outside the house. Then obviously he would take me outside. And I think that it, that was a, a good thing for me, being able to watch a lot of football. Once I played it, started playing it, my understanding was, I understood it quickly because I'd watched so much of it before I actually started playing. So yeah, that, that was my childhood young. Obviously, yeah, two brothers, two sisters and um, strict ish household <laughs> when you mean when you say strict what do you mean like what sort of um, rules were in place um, <laughs> to be fair because i had brothers my parents will sort of leave it yeah. to them to sort of relegate me you know what i mean <laughs> they were cool to be fair my brothers were cool especially as i got older like they they they've always let me like just be be who i am but i think when they're not there and my parents are there especially my dad um yeah, he wouldn't let me get away with too much. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I think, honestly, I was like, they used to tell me stories that I was a bit of a menace when I was proper young, but I think like once I came of age, when I was like, started to like get like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I thought, from what I can remember anyway, I thought I was a, a bit of a quiet boy and just, just got on with things really. Yeah, because you seem quite chilled, like your demeanor is <laughs> just calm, like yeah. you're proper lax with it. But like, in terms of going back, what position like did you start off playing like, on the estate? So like, on the estate, we used to, so I, I, I started as a left winger and um, on the estate, we used to play a game called Wembley. Yeah, we yeah, I played that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone yeah. in goal and then especially free fall. Yeah, so it's just yeah. Take, you take on as many men as you can and score and you're through to the next round. So that was that made me sort of a left winger. Um, that's the the position I played for my for my Sunday league team. Um, I don't know how long I was there for, maybe half a year, and then obviously that's the position I got scouted in. And then uh, I think I was at Arsenal for I can't remember 
less than a year and then they moved me to to uh, striker okay so you're destroying youth level like when do you notice that you know what, i've got a knack for this beautiful game um plug in the pod yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think as soon as i went to the academy like obviously what so that's arsenal academy yeah arsenal at the academy, age of uh what was that eight nine okay eight nine before i can remember yeah it's them ages there but to be fair sunday league uh i, I was loving it i was loving it i was killing it like you know what i mean i've been enjoying myself and then um luckily we had um and this is where i actually like it's actually luck that we had a arsenal scout lived on our state and um yeah my brother will go chat to him like can you do something for him obviously because he, he hadn't seen me he didn't really understand um probably how good i was or yeah how i was at that age so then he took me to like a, a place where he trains kids and um, yeah, I trained there one session. Then he found out I was two years younger than the players that I, was, that I was playing against. And he said, yeah, we're going, we're going, we're mm-hmm. going, I'll take you. But I think it's just, yeah, from, from when I actually started kicking the ball, like, I can remember the journey being so, so good. Obviously there was a period when I was at like under 14s where I nearly got released, but in terms of like going to watch my brother play, both of them and then them taking me outside to, to, to play football, like that's when I thought, yeah, this is, I'm enjoying this. And like, even having a conversation with my parents, like they didn't really understand, especially at a young age, I could actually play for Arsenal. They just thought they were taking me somewhere because I enjoyed it so much. Yeah. You know, parents, my parents are like, affing it. They don't really understand. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really understand how I can Yeah, yeah, they don't get it. Like they don't that. get it, yeah. You know what I mean? Obviously, mm. they, they see a few bits and bobs, but they don't really have a full understanding. Mm. So, but they just, they just knew that obviously, my brother would take me every three times a week, four times a week to Arsenal. And then if he couldn't make it, then they knew they sort of had to take me because um, I wanted to go, like, I would nag them. Like, mm. My parents always want to be late. And I'm like, like, mom, like, <laughs> let's go. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah, I think that's when they understood. But yeah, I love the game from, from young. Yeah, so you get into Arsenal, like, who's in your age group? Like, what's the energy like because obviously I used to kick ball as well and I made that transition from like Sunday league into yeah. academy football yeah. and it can be that sort of like everyone's eyeing you up like this yeah. is the new boy what position do you play <laughs> all that yeah, kind yeah, of stuff yeah. so like how is your anyway you were young when you yeah, went in but yeah, yeah you were young to be fair but how was that sort of transition so from what I can remember um <laughs> I went on trial <laughs> and I went um in a United kit so I went in my United kit, um, my first few, few, few trial, trial training sessions, but it was just, it was good. It was good. Like, as I said, I went there and you're seeing the nice AstroTurf, you're seeing the floodlights. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're seeing the pitches, you're seeing guys with new boots. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Um, so you sort of know that and understand like, okay, this is, this is better than what I'm used to sort of thing. But, yeah, it was just enjoyable for me. Like, I got signed within two weeks. So, like, it was good for me, like, playing with these guys because it's like, I can keep up sort of thing, you know, like, they didn't Okay, really so, like, when you're playing, what, Saturday, Sunday league, was it, like, not, was it too easy? Maybe, in a sense, but I didn't really, at, at that age, I don't, you don't really understand if mm. it's too easy or not. You're just playing and doing your thing, you know, like, you're just enjoying yourself. Um, at that age, I didn't really think about, oh, I need a new challenge. I just, as I said, I was I was playing um, for Sunday League team. Then the guy, um, Ryan Gordon, the scout, took me to where he used to train kids. And I was just playing there. Do you know what I mean? I just I just played for fun. So obviously when I went to Arsenal, I understood that, okay, the level was a bit higher, but I still kept up with with, with the boys there. So yeah, it was, it was a good transition to be fair. I didn't have no, no problems. So obviously you're at Arsenal, 12, 13, 14, going through the ranks. Yeah. What happens next? Um, so I'm going through the ranks and then there was a stage where, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, I can't really remember, but at under 14s, uh, I had a meeting with Liam Brady and he was just like, okay, like, Kwame and the guys told me that you train really well, but I don't really see, see, it, in, see it in the games. And I think, obviously that just, yeah, that really like gave me a little kick up the arse, basically. Mm. And then on the 15s, I had Kwame and, and Steve and they boosted the like, maximal confidence in me. And I think that's when like it changed 
for me and um, yeah I was playing 15s, 16s um, I will play on a Thursday then play on a Saturday um, so what were you playing striker these times because yeah, I, I read yeah, your story yeah, I, like, yeah, yeah, I was you... playing striker even slash 10 because I think you could see as I was growing up I, I wasn't obviously I was fast when I was younger because I was big so I was bigger than everyone else but then as I as I was getting older I wasn't the fastest but I was good on the ball so I was sort of I was playing 9 and 10 9 and 10 so I'll, I'll play both um, and then yeah at 16 we had a new academy manager and he was just like oh, who was the academy manager at the time? at the time before it was um, Liam Brady and he offered me and a few of us a scholarship and a pro on the 15s and then on the 16s at the end of the under 15 season a new one came in Andrew Shionka and obviously he'd seen us play and, and it, for some reason because I was playing 10 there was a few games I remember I played in midfield and I just dominated yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, but very raw though like mm. very raw like I, I, I properly learned how to play midfield when I went 18s and stuff like that but I was just basically enjoying myself in there you know getting the ball playing it do you know what I mean just just enjoy, like getting on the ball making stuff happen so I was still very raw but you could see that maybe I was a bit more comfortable because I think I maybe lost the knack for like that like scoring goals and le- like you know like someone like Eddie he just, <laughs> just you know it. I mean? yeah, everyone he just, says it he's got that yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, he knows where to be he's got the, the but with me I just I just love being on the ball and you know making stuff happen so um yeah so when I got to on the 16s I had a meeting with the academy manager Andrew Shunk at the time and he was just like um, obviously I've seen a few games of you in midfield and I feel like it might be a better position for you and I didn't even think twice really um, and my brother was buzzing as well because he's he sort of loves me he, he's, he saw the same thing mm. more or less he saw that I think midfield would probably be better, better suited for me and um yeah, and then, then when I went to uh, 18s, that's when obviously I started playing in midfield. You said that you almost got released. I think mm. that's an important topic to speak about because yeah. a lot of people, you know, listen and watch in and they might have been released or they don't see that side of the journey. They just see you playing in Prem, you yeah. know, scoring goals against Man United, West Ham, Leicester. Yeah. So, like, in terms of the sort of adversity that you had to come through, like, mm-hmm. talk to us about that. Yeah, it was it was mad because I remember there was one game and I always remember this. There was one game we played. Uh, we played against Chelsea, and my other brother and my sister came. Um, uh, Fab couldn't make it, and um, I played so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I what was so I saying, Fab? Oh, yeah, you <laughs> no, no, no. Well, 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 to be fair, whenever I so obviously used to play three twenties, I think, or yeah, three twenties or four twenties mm-hmm. back in the day. And after every twenty, I'll just look at him, and he'll just give me a nod, or give me a shake, and I'll know, yeah, I'll know yeah. that I would, I'll know what that means. But um, he wasn't there, and I played so bad, and I think I was fourteen, and obviously, I sort of knew that the pressure was on, <laughs> and I was on the phone to him, and I was just like crying, I was crying, I was fourteen, I was, and obviously I knew that. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, I, I'm thinking in my head, I don't yeah. want to leave Arsenal. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to go anywhere else. <laughs> I'm not trying to leave right now. And um, I think that is when it really hit home. Like, mm-hmm. listen. You need to pattern like, up. Yeah, anything. like, you, you got to do this. Like, no one's going to play the game for you. You sort of got to, you know, take the game to them and then uh, uh, show yourself, basically. And, um, yeah, and, and I did that. And, obviously, um, I ended up staying till the end of the season. Obviously, I had two years anyway, but he was saying that, we'll give you three months to, so before I make a decision so I've done well and then on the 15th season as I said that's when I sort of, sort of killed it and then by the end of that season I got offered a, a scholarship and a, and a professional contract and that's when you were playing in centre mid right? no 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 that's when I was a striker okay yeah that's when I was a striker okay. so this is at 15 mm-hmm. I only moved centre mid when I was 16 mm-hmm. 16, 17 so yeah I was still playing I was playing striker but I was playing 10 as well and you okay. could just see that I think maybe my just whole demeanour changed you know but as you said I think me being laid back, I think sometimes it, I think that the curse it, it is for me is that it might look like I don't care. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I, it maybe I think that trait I took onto the pitch sometimes, mm. and I just I just let people take control, and then mm, me taking yeah. control sort of thing. I was sort of laid back, 
So I just think my whole demeanor changed, and you could see that, that I was hung, I was more hungry, and maybe not hungry, but just understanding, you know, because obviously I was always hungry, I always wanted to stay, um, but yeah, it, it just changed, and yeah, it was obviously at the time it was hard, but you know, it's, it, it happens, what it is, yeah, yeah, it is what it is, like it's happen, it happens, and yeah, it was, it, it was probably yeah, good learning curve when I look back to be honest. So obviously you move into midfield and I've spoken to multiple contacts in the game and they're like, listen, Josh from early, genetic freak. Mm. Bullying players, putting players on the floor, destined to make it. Like, when did you feel that hold on, like, I can actually make it as like a professional footballer? This is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> because in my, in my head, I always think, it's funny because... I'm I'm very like think the worst sort of person mm -hmm. and obviously Fab's like he's my brother, he's he's like like your your like he put so much belief in me, you know. So bro, it's I've like, heard it all. I've yeah. heard it from him, bro. <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah. So like, but belief but belief, but don't get me wrong, he would tell me like to be fair, we've got to a stage where I know, but he will still tell me, mm -hmm. you know, but like he always had that belief in me. So for me, maybe at, maybe at 15, 16, when you start going to Shenley, you start realizing that, okay, this can become a thing. Obviously I've been offered a scholarship and a pro. So it's like, I'm not going to college. I'm not going to sixth form. I'm going, I'm yeah. going to Arsenal full time and I'm going to be getting paid. So that's when you start to understand um, agents get involved. You know what I mean? Start contract talks. Then you're like, okay, this is actually becoming a thing. Um, and then I think I looked at that and just think, it doesn't matter how, because as I said, I always think the worst. I, I, I'm thinking in my head, even if I don't play for Arsenal, I have to have a career somehow. Mm. I have to. Of course I want to play for Arsenal, but I'm going to be a professional footballer mm. so during, somewhere. During that time, was there like any other clubs like sniffing around? Or? Um, no, my head was quite strict and straight on Arsenal awesome. at that time. Yeah, I, I didn't really want to move anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I was happy that I was comfortable there. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to take the next step. You know, Arsenal's always been one of the best ac academies. So, yeah, it wasn't really a thing to think about too much. Like, it was just, yeah, let's, let's, get, let's get the ball rolling sort of thing. Mm, so you're progressing at Arsenal, making up the, the levels. When was that moment that you got called in to like train with the first team? Yeah, I remember that. That was like my, it wasn't too long after we were going to I was probably, I was still 16, uh, maybe just turned 17. <coughs> Obviously you get the call up. I think it's like a pre-match, pre-match, like a day before uh, one of their games. And um, yeah, mad. Uh, I remember playing against Santi Cazorla. Yeah, everyone, so, every Arsenal player that's come on, like whether it's Joe Willock, whoever, they say that guy, something listen, else, like, listen. yeah. Listen, I think there was one time I, I tried to press him <laughs> and uh, he just, he made me do like a full 360 spin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he still, and, and the ball just came back to him and then the first team coach at the time just said, Josh, don't, don't press him. Yeah, just <laughs> learn from that, <laughs> like, yeah. Just, yeah. just let him do what, do you know what I mean? You know, just let him do what he's doing. But yeah, unbelievable touch, left foot, right foot, doing corners, taking it with his left. He's taking, mm. he's taking both in-swingers on both sides. So in-swinger on this side with his right, mm. in-swinger that side with his left. Yeah. And this guy in pinpoint, <laughs> like, he's not, he's not yeah, he was a, a technical <laughs> freak, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, not, he's not missing a man. Yeah. So, yeah, that that time was, uh, obviously it's a good learning curve and then you're in and out of it. And then obviously once I got older, I was consistently, more consistently training with them. But yeah, the first times um, you look back and I think when, when you look back and you think, like you're a bit starstruck, you know, mm. and you and 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 I always say this like the people like Eddie, Joe Reese and Eddie. The reason why they done so well is because they didn't care, mm. you know. And I learned that going to Brentford because pff, you, I got to take someone's position, bro. I can't be mm. as good as these players are, and I respect them, but I got to play. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I didn't come here to make up numbers. Yeah, you know no, I mean? that's and the I mindset. Think I learned man. that when I went there. I think. Obviously, I maybe I got to a stage at Arsenal where I was maybe a bit too comfortable. My mindset was a bit comfortable, but 
looking back and seeing why Travis and Eddie made it into the first team is because when they played, they're for themselves. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're going, they're going hard. So, yeah, that that, that was a, obviously training at Arsenal, the facilities, everything, and with the first team was, was mad. Obviously, I'm 16 and I'm, I'm going to tell my school friends, yeah, I'm just changed with, with Santi, Mesa, Alexis and that. Like, yeah, I'm jealous. Yeah, yeah no, crazy. Sick. Yeah, like even talking about Meza, he's just recently retired. Yeah. You know, one of the, probably one of the best number 10s in recent times, the way he manipulated the ball, mm-hmm. the quality he had. What was it like learning under him? And did you have a relationship with him? Yeah, them guys were, were cool, you know. Whenever we went there, um, like you, you, sort of had, you, had, you had to say hi to them. Like you couldn't go, go like even in around the training ground. But just out of respect, you know, like if I see you, I say hi. But they were cool. I wouldn't say we had a relationship, but just the understanding that, yeah, like, obviously you're young, I'm coming over to train and they will treat me the same as they will treat anyone else. You know, like a few jokes here and there. But yeah, it was good. Learning from them guys was uh, was crazy. Like you can just see, like, Alexis was mental. Like the, the, how hard <laughs> this guy worked. Like he literally played how he trained. You know, like he was literally on it all the time. Obviously, that's why he's had such a good career. Yeah, he's still going strong at what yeah, I'm saying now, yeah, and yeah, I see him yeah. still bagging in the goals. Exactly. So. But obviously, someone like Mezit was a bit more chilled, but you could still see the, the quality. quality. Yeah, yeah, the quality just, just shone through. Yeah, because he had, not let me say a similar issue, but like when things aren't going well, yeah, look yeah. at his body language. Yeah, he yeah, doesn't yeah. care, and yeah, yeah, yeah. people might try and yeah, level that against you. Yeah. As you said, like with him, He's he's a sort of player like you, with him like you know what you're getting you know and he's that talented you know I'm not saying I'm that talented so I got to work hard you know what yeah, I'm yeah. I got to work hard and it's not it's not that I don't want to work hard I think for me earlier on it was just about understanding like as I said I was still learning the midfield role as well you know so that's why it it, it came across like that but yeah if someone like him you sort of He's that talented, like he's played for Real Madrid and look what he was doing at Real Madrid. So you just gotta maybe fit him in somehow and, and to, to, to help his help his strengths, sort of thing. So yeah, no, but he was he was a joke. That's some of the touches that he would do, you know, like mm. you know he like he likes his flicks and, and magic. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Magic like <laughs> in, in five rows and that like, it was long. If him and Mezzo were on the same team, pff, yeah, yeah. Joke. no yeah. one's getting the ball well, you're no, not sorry, seeing him and Alexis sorry so if, Me- yeah, yeah. if Meza and it. Alexis were on the same team forget about it that, yeah, yeah. Forget. <laughs> that would give that would give Ozil more energy because you can see Alexis doing it okay. like, so he'll be like okay yeah we're gonna win today yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about playing in midfield you said you had to get that understanding so like what things did you have to develop and what sort of information did you have to take on board yeah. to um, implement it into your game yeah so like when I went when I became a scholarship, obviously played in 18s, played a few games. And um, luckily I had uh, Kwame Ampadu, I had him at f- 14s and 15s. And then he came up, when we went up as well. And then Thierry came as well. Um, and obviously after a few games, I will say like five, six games, obviously they sat me down, both of them, and just like, listen, obviously you can see, the, see you're talented, but these are the certain credentials you would need as a midfielder. Um, look to play forward, get across, get up to the ball, drop back, cover your other midfielder, um, press, just just like six, seven pointers that you should always keep in mind. And like, regardless of how bad you do on the ball, like these are the certain things that will like, more or less keep you in the team. Do you know what I mean? Or just, just make you look good. Because I think as a midfielder, you can, you can go by having six out of ten games if you just work hard. Yeah. You know, if you just yeah. work hard, work your socks off, you know, and have a good understanding of the game. Something like a Milner, people might say, just you, you know get I mean? consistency. Stages, yeah. Yeah. Like if you just if you just have a good understanding of the game and you work hard, you can hit six sevens out of tens. And then obviously that's when, you know, when you're when you're like someone like Yaya Torre or Gerard and you're taking people on and scoring goals and clamping people and <laughs> you know what I mean and then that's yeah. when it gets to the nines and tens mm. so just having that sort of understanding um, and, and and learning on, on how to play the position really yeah that was um, obviously when I was yeah 16 17 just learning and and obviously I always wanted to work hard so 
it's, it was never a problem for me and I just put my head down and just started chipping away. So you have the season where you make your debut in the cup. Um, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I think you made three appearances yeah. in the now called Carabao yeah, Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't know what it was back then, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me just say Carabao Cup before I disgrace myself. But <laughs> <laughs> how, how was that feeling? Was the family there? Yeah. Do you so remember it? Yeah. So the first game, first game, I think all the games that were there. I know Fab was there for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first game they were all there, I think I remember, because um, my agents had the box there and I got my family in there. Um, they came on at half time, left centre back. Left centre back? Yeah, left centre back. Someone got injured. Because um, I was always comfortable on the ball, you know. And then I remember the first five minutes, I think I made, obviously I'm, I'm nervous. Like, I'm almost <laughs> like at half time, I'm thinking, oh. It's only 1 0, so the game's kind of. In the balance, kind of. Yeah, good. Like obviously, I think we played Doncaster, but you know how it's going to happen. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? So, um, yeah, I'm playing left centre back. I've never played that position. I, I had dipped one or two times in and out of it, but don't really know the position. So it's just, yeah, just go and play, sort of thing. Um, Remember the first two, three minutes, I must have passed off the pitch. <laughs> the, way Alexa, the way Alexa shouted at me. <laughs> I said, yeah, i got to switch on, i got to switch on. And then, to be fair, I think for the rest of the game, it was a bit easier, Ozzy. I had, I had um, Mert Saka and he helped a lot to me. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Big up, uh, playing, yeah. playing centre um, of the three. So he was just always talking to me. Um, yeah. And I think Ainsley was playing left wing back, so I was literally, as soon as I got the ball, Ains take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what you got to do, though, oh, in your debut, like, just play it safe. Fair, there was one or two passes, I, I played forward with decent passes. A uh, couple of times I lost it, but yeah, like I just, as, I, I took that as in, like, I basically played that position like I was playing in midfield, you know? So I just, I tried to make forward passes, a few came off, a few didn't, but. Yeah, that was the first time I made my debut, and uh, yeah, it was obviously a real, real, real proud moment for for me and my family because you know the sacrifices and the hard work has not paid off, but you've hit a milestone, like a, a good milestone, you know. So yeah, it was it was good. Mm, so what were mum and dad saying? They were buzzing. They were buzzing. Like as I said, they didn't really like when you have conversations with them now. When I'm young, they don't really understand what it could get to, what what it could amount to. Um, but then when you got like my family in Angola or her friends or the colleague that she works with saying, going to her, messaging her, oh, your son played, <laughs> this, this, that. I think that's when it really sink, really starts to, to, to sink in for them, you know. And yeah, like, as I said, it was a real, real good moment for me and my family because there has had, there has been some hardships for for the family that we had to go through, and you know that was a uh, just like a a thing of like celebration, you know, because that's what we've, we've been working for. So yeah, no, it was nice. Yeah, so like between that period of your debut and leaving Arsenal, like what happened in between? So that's what happened. So yeah, so then twenty ones come. Um, so we had youth cup. Remember Youth Cup, we, we thought we were we were good, we were good. And we thought, yeah, we could win it this year. First round, Reese Nelson gets red card, gets Blackburn, and we're knocked out. So head's gone. Um, and then 21s, uh, play 21s, captain them, won the, won the cup. Um, and then that was, that was, to be fair, that was my last season. So it's funny enough, the last, that season, the first game of the season, I wasn't even in the squad. So I wasn't in the squad um, initially. And I ended up being in the squad because I think we had so many first teams. I think that game, Francis Cochran played, Jack Walsh played, uh, Tuba played, uh, Carl Jenkinson. So we had a lot of first team players in, in that team. So I was on the bench, ended up coming on. Then I started playing left wing back and you could sort of see I was angry playing there, but I was doing well there. So when you say angry, what do you mean your like demeanor I or? I didn't want to play there. Like okay. My face. Like, see, yeah. <laughs> like, I was still trying. Like, I, I would try. Yeah. Like, I'm never one not to try, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always going to try it and, and work hard. But you could see my face. I was like, 
I'm fuming, but I would do well there, mm. you know. So I played there for six, seven games. And then I remember there was one game where one of the midfielders got injured and I, I stepped into midfield and um, yeah, I played well. And the first team manager was, the first team coach was there. Um, and he was just like, yeah, I want Josh in midfield for, for the time. Um, so then I started playing midfield, started doing well. Then it got to January, last six, six months of my contract, uh, contract discussions, and yeah, we I was play I was still playing, doing well, became captain. We're winning every game. Obviously, some of us are way on the bench for Europa, and some of the, some of us are playing twenty one. So sometimes like Joey Sinelli would be on the bench for the Europa, or some of them will start. To be fair, or if not, they'll come and play for us. So the team was very, very strong. Um, and then obviously we've gone on to win the cup and then obviously during that time contract negotiations and then yeah obviously me for her, my agents we just had to sit down and, and, and think about what was best for my career you know and um, yeah we, we came to a decision that it was it was best for me to leave and yeah it would be hard but that's just how how it went sounds a bit strange because you were like actually flying and then all of a sudden, like, all of a sudden, you're just leaving Arsenal. So, yeah. what, like, can you talk about that sort of process? Yeah, like, it was just, it was, it was just a sense of, sense of value, you know, because I think maybe some people, I, I know there was rumours saying I was asking for a crazy amount. And <laughs> nonsense. Yeah, <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> like, I went to Brentford and took less money, so yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't mm. make, you know what I mean? I had other offers from other clubs and took less money, so it, does, it wasn't never about the money. So which other clubs were so I could have went Birmingham I could have went clubs abroad but it was just a thing for me I just you know I just wanted to have a, a clear plan and, and, and yeah full value you know so obviously we were having a contract negotiations they're not going how I wanted you're hearing yeah I'm asking for this amount that amount I'm just sitting there thinking you know what I mean? So where's this coming from? Is I, I that almost know. like the club trying Listen, to... Listen, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm the physio, the, the, the sports scientist is coming to me telling me, Josh, you're asking for this now. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, bro, are you, are you, yeah, yeah. Are you crazy? <laughs> like, are you mad? Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So it's, it's just it's, it's, it's just how it goes, isn't it? Um, and then, yeah, as I said, it's always been a sense of, of value, you know, and, and, and that's it. And providing that I obviously show but I felt like as, I, as you said I, I, I was doing quite well um, so it wasn't like I was playing rubbish or I was doing quite well um, and yeah just w wanted to feel a sense of value so yeah we thought you know w w what's the next step where can I take the next step and, and, and show myself really and uh, yeah it was hard because as I said my parents like it, Talking to my mum now, she told me she she when I told her that I was leaving, she was crying. Wow. She cried, yeah, she cried, she prayed. Because obviously they thought I was destined to play for Arsenal. I've been mm. there for so long, obviously. We're strong believe, believers in God. So mm. she they, they thought like it was like meant to be, because I've been there for so long, but you know, it's just yeah, I just wasn't feeling it at the time and and um and to be honest, to be honest, like my, my brother and my agents they're the ones that put the most belief in me because I I wanted to leave but I was like I don't mind staying but then they were like Josh like, you don't understand how good you are like you can get out and play in the championship and your value will be way like do you know what I mean through the roof so it was a thing with just like listen like obviously I believe in myself and, the, and these guys my closest people they know they know me you know, from top to bottom. So, and they believe that I can play, so let's go for it. So in terms of the talks with Arsenal, was there like a roadmap that, listen, if you sign, we're going to loan you for a year to, I don't know, championship yeah. team. Yeah. And after that, if you do well, well there, we'll progress you to a better team, then you can potentially get into the first team. Or how are those talks? Yeah, so it was like, they wanted me to sign and then they'll loan me out. Um, but then we sat down and thought, okay, how many players have gone on loan from Arsenal and come back and played in the first team. Was there any? Jack Wilshaw, Hector Ainsley, three in the last 10 years. So we thought, 
yeah, like that sounds good, but you know, like is that is that opportunity arise? And you know, it's it, you can sit here and be like, oh, I believe in yourself, go and play. But that's what I'm saying. At the time, it just didn't sit right with me. You know, um, did you feel like wanted, or did you feel like it was almost like a tokenistic offer? Like we want you to stay, but not really. Kind yeah, of yeah, sort of. Yeah, that's that's sort, sort of how I felt. Like they, I think they felt that there was a player in, there was a player there, but they weren't like. A hundred percent sure, you know. So it's one of them things. It's fine, you know. I believe in myself, and I've got people that believe in me. So if that's the case, then you know we'll we'll, we'll go do our thing. So yeah, that, that that was the situation, and there was a, as you said, yeah, there was that that was the plan for me to go out alone and come back, but I just didn't feel like that was uh, uh, for me to be honest. So obviously that summer. There was interest from Birmingham, Brentford, chasing this hot prospect, Josh De Silva. <laughs> what makes you come to the decision to join Brentford? So, um, yeah, <laughs> I was uh, obviously discussing my, my brother and agents about what, what would be the best step for me um, and having talks with clubs and stuff like that. And then um, we spoke to we spoke to Brentford, no, no, Birmingham, sorry. I had a good meeting with uh, Gary Monk and um, went there, just showed me what, what I'm good at and, and, and how I can prove and how I'd fit into his style of play because to be fair he had a good good resume and, and wanted to play good football you know but they were just under transfer embargo so it was hard for them to sign players but he was like listen I want you to be part of my project and um, yeah I was I was happy to, to, to sign there so as I've gone as I've gone to do the medical we're supposed to meet up at the stadium to sign they call my agent and say, meet us up back at the hotel. We're like, okay, that's weird. Yeah. Um, going back to the hotel, then this he, the sporting director who was like, yeah, the guy was sorting it out. He said, how's your how's your leg? Like, I'm thinking my leg's fine. He said, yeah, you've done a scan. You've got a stress fracture. I'm like, huh? Mm-hmm. I'm like, what's going? On? What do you mean? <laughs> like, yeah, you got a stress fracture. So were you injured at the time though? I didn't know. <laughs> so, I, I never Scooby. I, I I was training all summer, like all summer running everything. I didn't feel a thing. You know what I mean? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't have a clue. Um, I had a stress fracture, and um, so they're like, "He's like, cool. I got to tell the owner, make a few calls, and, and we'll see." So did you have the stress fracture? Yeah, after, I did. Okay. Yeah, I did. Okay. I did. I had a stress fracture after we've done the medical. Obviously, he's t- remember he told me to come back to the hotel rather than go to the stadium and sign. <laughs> so I've gone back to the hotel. He said, "Okay, you've got a stress fracture. Like, we've, done, we've seen the report. You've got a stress wow. fracture." I'm like, I'm all tapping my legs, saying, <laughs> <It's> calm, <laughs> I'm, good. <laughs> "I'm good to go." <laughs> so we're like, "It's mad." I think I stayed up. I stayed up there one more night. He was like, "Make a few calls." See, so next day he's like, "Yeah, me and the gaffer still want to do it, but you know, the owners." He's a bit iffy, you know what I mean? Because um, they would have had to go tribunal for me. They're under an embargo. So I think they're still deciding on ways on how they could do it without them taking too much of a loss. And then obviously Brentford are still calling my agents every like every day at this point, like once I'm doing it. So then they've called my agent. They're like, listen, like, like we want to we like, see Josh. They're like, okay, but he's got stress factor. Brentford, we don't care. No. Just come and meet us. So that like, cool. Go and meet them. Met um, Rob Owen, God bless his soul, and met Dean Smith at the time. Um, and yeah, had a meeting with them. Crazy. As soon as I got the meeting, I said, "Listen, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> just get this deal yeah. done." So yeah. what was it about I, the meeting? Was it like? You hear about projectors on the board. This is where you're gonna Dossiers. play. Yeah, yeah Dossiers, everything. Like, everything. Documents. Everything. Like, this is where we see you fitting in. Yeah, you're gonna come in. You're gonna play on this side. You're gonna be servicing the ball. It, it was. It, it's. Remember, I'm still young. I've only played three first team. Like when I spoke, when I speak to the our manager now, he was assistant. So Thomas Frank, he's a, he was assistant at the time. I was asking him like, how do you do your like scouting reports and stuff like that, and they were like, and he was like, with you. It was my majority was it was just Rob, like he saw you, watched you so many times. He said we need this guy because normally they will do, 
Remember, they're big on stats as well. So they yeah. like they like visuals, but they, so like if you're playing first team ugly, they, they'll they'll look at your stats, and then they will do their visuals as well. But with me, it was majority just Rob, just because he's seen me play, and they obviously Rob is trusted. Like I think he got he got uh, Van Dijk and Wanyama at Celtic, and mm. you know, so he's he's got a good eye. So it's rather eye test rather than a data test with yeah you. yeah with me yeah, yeah 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 so it was an eye test um and yeah the, the meeting was good what i need to improve on what I, what i'm good at what we, what we need to do um how we play how you fit into the system um yeah just just like what could happen obviously we want to be in the prem but if you if you don't if if we don't make it in the prem soon then you can go but first and foremost, we want to be, become a Premier League team. So I was like, listen. I'm signing. I'm, yeah. I'm all down for that. I think there was 10% desperation that I wanted to get signed. And yeah. then 90% because of the project <laughs> at the time. Because <laughs> of the project. The project was so big and so good and like so believable that, yeah, I just wanted to, wanted to get there as soon as. So like, how long was that period between the Birmingham Medical and going into the offices at Brentford? I think that was actually a couple of days. Two days. Okay, yeah. So wow. we, 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 I've come back from Birmingham. So that's what I'm saying. We, we, I think we had the medical at Birmingham. Then I've, I've stayed up an extra night, I think. Then I've gone back to London. Then the day after that, I've met Brentford. In a, yeah, in a hotel. And then... Agreed, uh, like okay, not agreed, but we've had the had the meeting, and I've told my brother, my agents, listen, get the deal done, and then signed a week later. Oh, I think it was, yeah, it was yeah, quick, yeah, quick yeah, turnaround. Quick, yeah, quick turnaround. Life like of a footballer. Yeah, like they did. <laughs> as soon as like that's what I'm saying. When they heard, obviously, about the stress fracture, and I, thought, I think they got the report from Birmingham as well, and they saw it, and they just thought, yeah, you know what, this is you'll be back in six weeks. Like this is not a problem. Mm. If it weren't bad, I think it was just a, a small one. So, so like, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. So I want to fast forward a little bit just because of time and we've got so much to dive yeah. into and obviously we want to be respectful with your time. Yeah, that's cool. So now you're dominating the championship, absolutely ripping teams to pieces, mm. that left foot, just bending them into the top corner. You're confident, you're flying. Talk to us about that sort of period when you're playing your best football. Okay, I would say my... So obviously I was there... So I was in the champ for three seasons yeah, while I was there. There was that middle season, yeah. 10 yeah. goals. Just, yeah, yeah, so the, yeah. The, yeah, but I've, okay, the, the first season was, set you in. know, set, yeah, mm. settled in. The middle season, it was good. That like, on paper, it was very good. <laughs> it was very good, but, like, I think just just being, just being having that, like, inexperience of playing uh, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, um, those games where I'll score, I touched the ball five times. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying about stats. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, wow, he's badding it up. Do you know what I'm trying to yeah. say? And then there's games where I'll rip it and I won't score. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that, to me, that's not such a bad thing. Yeah. I think as a midfielder, as a number eight, it's either you score goals and assist or you run the whole game. And if you can do both, then... That's when the magic mean? happens. Yeah, yeah, you yeah that's when you become... Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I'm trying to say? And there's even now, if you look at top midfielders, I'd, there's not many that can do both at a high level. It's hard, you know? So, yeah, so... That the I would I would I would dip in between in the middle season. Obviously, there might have been one or two games. I think maybe the looting game that everything just worked for me. I scored a hat trick. <laughs> everything I was kidding it, scoring. Yeah, you know what I mean? Everything yeah. just going well. And funny enough, I remember Fab said to me because I lost the ball in the first minute of the game, and he said to me, "Josh, I thought he was going to play rubbish this game." But I don't know. You know when you're just playing, and this is what I mean. Like when you're playing and. You, you you have you have a, a confidence, and I think that's what I learned as well. You just things can turn can turn around. So you know, like I was, I probably had a bad five minutes, and then you know, what I mean, everything just comes. One thing happens, and then leads onto another, and then I score, score again. Then you know, what I mean, I'm flying. And then the third season, or the season we got promoted, I think that's when it was like, yeah, like I'm I'm going into every game, like yeah, just. I'm gonna do me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna do me. Whatever I can do to help the team, obviously I always I always wanna help the team. But I know that at this level that, you know, I can do me sort of thing and just walking in to that 
to, to games with maximal confidence. I remember we went 22 games unbeaten as well. So just having that that freedom as well from the, from the gaffer and the belief from your teammates and just within yourself is is non is like unreal, you know. So yeah, I think that's like when I'm walking out to games, I'm just like, yeah, let's go. Cool. You know, even if I'm tired. And I remember that season we played Newcastle um, in the cup, and I oh, scored. Yeah. I'm telling you. I was tired. I think that day Jamie Redknapp mm. was on Sky no, but this, you up. No, but this is like, what you've got, <laughs> got to understand. 10 minutes into the game, yeah. I was gone. I so what, what made you so tired? I was starting every game. Okay. <laughs> because beginning of that season, I went away with England before the season started. Mm. And now I, I didn't start. We obviously played, you played two games. I didn't start none of the games. So the gaffer was like, Josh, I want you to get up to speed. So I'm playing cup games, champ game, cup games. Obviously earlier on, earlier on there's only, you play champ Saturday, 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 but then there's cup games in between. FA and Carabao. So I'm starting every game, <laughs> every single game, you know, and then you get to a state, but, but because I've, I've done it last season, you sort of have that experience and that know-how, you know, to still, you know, find a way to play well. And so that, that Newcastle game, I'm tired, bro. Like, I'm tired. I think Fabi even messaged me, <laughs> but like, it's one of them ones where, as I said, because I have that experience, it's just like, okay, you pick and choose your moments, be smart, you know, and, and just un- that understand, obviously you understand the game, understand the game, understand yourself, sorry. So yeah, just, just yeah, pick and choose and, and, and yeah, just enjoy it. And I think, I think that when I'm tired, you just, en- you just want to enjoy it. Yeah. We was doing so well then as well, you know, we're like, we're, we beat, I think in, in the Carabao, when we got to semi-finals, we beat three, four Prem teams. That season. Yeah, and you were making your name then. And as Dot was saying, a lot of like Prem clubs were like being rumored to be interested. So in and around that time, were there any like concrete offers that came to you? No, we, okay. we didn't. We didn't care about that. Okay. I think th- that season is when we knew. No, no, the season before is when because I, I signed a new that season. I signed a new contract. So for me, it was about getting Brentford to the Premier League. You know, like that. That was it because we, we the season before we were so close. We got to the we got to the final. Yeah, the final. against Fulham. Yeah, yeah against talk Fulham. to us about that because I remember. Leading up onto that, there was yeah. the front three of obviously yeah. Saeed Ben Rama, um, Ivan, and Wemo. So yeah. that was sort no, of no, like that was Oli. That was Oli Watkins. Yeah, sorry, Oli Watkins. Oli Brian. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put in the BMW. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So talk to us about that front three because you guys were causing damage. Yeah. And um, like, yeah. Them guys were at that time prolific. Like the numbers were stupid. Brian had sixteen goals. Eight assists. Oli had twenty-five goals. How many assists? Said had sixteen goals, ten assists. Yeah. I had ten goals. <laughs> you had to put that one in. <laughs> no, but, uh, no, but honestly, one like, in. <laughs> honestly, like we were like we were flying. I remember we had the COVID break, and then after COVID, I think we just we won nine and nine. Like that's why at the end of the last game of the season, we could have got autos. That's how, and we was, we, we, at the beginning of that, we was like 10 points off, but because we won every game, we were just, you know, that, and that's what I mean, like you're just walking into games thinking we're going to win today. That there's no way we don't win. I remember we're losing to Charlton, 70th minute, we end up winning the game. So like, what was the feeling no way, around that time though, like when you were just winning every single we game? We had so many um, characters and, and like people that wanted to take responsibility, you know, like when you're on form like that, like, if you got Said, Oli, like, these guys are scoring goals left, right, centre, creating goals left, right, centre, like, we have to win. Obviously, and even the defence, the defence was top. Rico, Pontus, Ethan, Henrik, you know what I mean? Christian playing CDM, me and Matty in midfield, and then these guys just running riot, like, that. Like, there was, yeah, just walking into a game thinking, we have to win. Like, there's no two ways about it. And then, um, Obviously, we lose. Remember, we lose the first leg of the, of the playoff semi final, and then obviously win Is the that second. Swansea, Swansea, yeah, 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 played Swansea, lost one nil, then beat them three one um, at home, and then I think to be fair, the final was just an experience on our half. I think like you could we we scored the most goals that season in the champ. We didn't have one shot on target. That so game. like leading up to it, did you? Because again, you said you were confident, yeah. you're just winning bare yeah, games yeah, in a row. Like in and around the environment, was it a bit like Ooh, Wembley? Oh, this is a bit. <laughs> did you feel that or like, because why didn't you perform in that game? That, uh, yeah, I just think, yeah. Looking back, yeah, you sort of played the occasion. 
mm. you know and that's one thing I learned like you, you sort of play the occasion like you realise wow like this this can be crazy like if we do this you know so like you're you're cautious you know what I mean you're not playing you're like your normal game you're playing safe you, know I mean? you don't want to make a mistake do you know what I'm trying to say and then when that all comes in when you've got a lot of people remember that no, no one's been in that position except for Pontus so it's all new to everyone and we just yeah as I said I think it was just experience from there because we beat them twice in the season yeah yeah do you know what I mean that season and I think it was just yeah experience on their half obviously they scored the, the free kick and then they went on to yeah, yeah they Joe Bryan guy yeah that was a weird uh, yeah, 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 yeah I mean they scored a free kick and then obviously we're chasing they score again and then we score in the last minute so it was a thing where yeah, it was, it was just a thing full of uh, experience. But for me personally, not getting promoted, I think that was it was good for me. If I'm being selfish, mm-hmm. it was really good for me. So why was it good for you? It was good for me because then it gave me an opportunity to, to you know, I felt like I had more to prove. I think selfishly, yeah, it's good for me. It would have been great for the fans, you know. It, we done it in the end and it obviously it taken us 70, 70 years plus years. But, for me to, to to play again in in the championship and you know as I said the season before that season sorry I was um, still learning learning my, my trade sort of thing and I think I could take that into fruition the next season um, yeah and I think yeah it worked out well because we ended up getting promoted the next season so just a very quick one on that season just the last one before we move on is obviously you lose the final. And Thomas Frank, he's an animated figure. What does he say in the dressing room? He wasn't too angry, you know. Okay. He just Did said, he say next season we're going prem? Or? He said, yeah, he said next season we're getting promoted. He's like, guys, go and enjoy your summer. <laughs> Have your fun. He said, next season we are getting promoted. And then, that, that's what I'm trying to say. And that, season, and that, like, two, three months later, we came back, I signed a new contract because I believed it as well. Mm. You know, I, I believed that I was, that we, we had a good opportunity of getting promoted. So, yeah. Yeah, so what, you get promoted to the Prem. What's the atmosphere around the club? Because I know there's that whole joke about it just being a bust up in Hounslow, yeah. etc. that everyone likes yeah. to say. So like, in terms of like moving into that new stadium, yeah. all the hype around the club, like, chat to me, what happens? So, we, we moved to the stadium the season in the champ yeah. um yeah we, we go and get promoted it's crazy man obviously i was i, I got injured i see you on the pitch with your, your yeah, crutches at the time yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm injured i get injured i get injured but it's one of them ones where the injury was made a lot easier obviously because of the support of my family friends and obviously the faith i have in god but these guys performed so well. There's a stage to be fair, but we drew like five and six, and it was so frustrating because you know you want to be out there to help the team, but for majority of the time, the team done so well, and it was just it made life so much easier, you know. And um, yeah, obviously went to Wembley. I knew was getting I knew was getting promoted. I knew. I even got a trim. <laughs> like, I'm like, gonna be in those photos yeah, promotion. Like, I, yeah. I knew because I was thinking Swansea are gonna have to face what we faced last year, and we played them twice, and we battered them. But we drew both games, mm. but we, we were better yeah, than the them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're the better team. So it was one of them ones where I thought we have to win. You know, like we have to win. Like every, the whole team has been in this position. Do you know what I mean? So we we have to win and then yeah we go 2-0 up in the first 20 minutes Ivan hits the cross when he makes it 3-0 if he scored that I would have went down and, it was a mad it yeah, was a volley. Mad attempt yeah, yeah volley yeah, 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 yeah. it would have been 3-0 in like half an hour yeah. I would have went down and sat on the bench and, and, and <laughs> started celebrating <laughs> but um, for the rest of the game yeah. rest of the game I just we're just like we're really going to do it like you know what I mean I'm, my message my phone's blowing off you know my brother and my agents are downstairs like, I'm in I'm in a box with me it was me Rico um Shan and a few other guys, we're just there and we're just like, like yeah, this is, yeah, this is, this is the moment. Yeah, yeah, like it's happening. Then they get a red card. Then we're like, oh, yeah. this is yeah. even better. Oh. Party yeah. time. Oh. <laughs> and then, yeah, we go, I, I go, we go like, they, they try to say, oh, you're not allowed on the pitch. Pardon? 
Yes. Come on. I'm moving my crutches. Come on. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> to be fair, the first thing I done was I went to a few of the Swansea players mm. and I just um yeah, I just spoke to them and just you know consoled them because it's hard, man. Yeah, because you've been there previously, yeah, yeah, so previously, you know as it yeah. feels, yeah. And then yeah, after that the party started. <laughs> um crazy. I would say to the, to be fair, when they actually went to lift, I thought a part of me wanted to go and jump so bad because I remember I was on crutches, but I couldn't actually feel pain. It was just just to take the weight, so that so you know so it was so the bone could heal sort of thing. So I wanted to go and jump, and I could have probably because when we went to the stadium, I was there jumping with my crutches in the air. Like yeah, I couldn't I couldn't contain the the excitement, um, and yeah, just obviously we had a few fans there. See my brother, my brothers, my agent stairs. Uh, yeah, it's a bit emotional, you know, yeah. like to say, yeah, like this has been the plan since I was watching match of the day in 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 his room. Um, you know, we wanted to be there, so yeah, mm. it, was, it was it was good. Because hmm, we skimmed over something. You mentioned the fact that you're you were on crutches, mm-hmm. you were injured and stuff yeah. like that. So just very briefly, talk to us about that injury, how you got it, yeah. and the um, impact it had on you. So we had a, it's a weird one, man. Like we had a COVID outbreak and um, you're not allowed in the training ground for a week. So we have to go find somewhere to, to, to train. So I'm like to them, I'm like to demand them, like my boys and ends, five O's, let's go. Mm. Like I'm there every day. So I've gone there, playing is cool. I come back, um, training, training, training. Feel good, everything's fine. Played the game, felt fine. Then I took a shot in training, and something in my hips just like tweaked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, like this funny one. Yeah, it's a bit <laughs> funny. Like, <laughs> and we got a game tomorrow. Yeah, I'm like, I had death row can't play tomorrow. Like, mm-hmm. there's this. Do you know what I mean? I'm limping in. I'm in the showers, and I'm just thinking. Like normally when some, someone does something, you're like, oh, I'll be all right. But in the man, we're on a good run as well. So, now to be fair, we hit like a, a bumpy, a bumpy ride. So the gaffer sort of wants me in, but I'm just like, gaffer, this one, like, you know, you know, I'm there every game. Like that's what, like, I see a few things, people saying I'm injury prone. Like I've had, I've had two injuries. Like I, obviously the one I had was lengthy, but, I'm always available, like, mm. do you know what I mean? Other than that injury, and I obviously I done my hammy when I came back from that, but other than that, I'm always, I've am always i always been available, like, for every game, every session. So, like, once he knows that, okay, like, I actually have to sit this one out, he's like, okay, cool. Then I have a scan. Scan comes back, it's like, it's not great, but it's not bad. <laughs> so I'm like, listen, I need to play, bro. <laughs> I'm trying to get promoted. <laughs> 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 give me a cocoa more. Let's get the ball rolling. The numbs the pain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Meditation, listen, man. Listen, give me a cocoa more. Let's get the ball rolling. Play him, play him. And I'm doing well as well. Like, remember one game, I think we played Reading, uh, scored two goals, went top of the league. These times, but I'm on education these times. So, but as I said, the scan's not good, it's not bad. So we sent it to a few, uh, during these times, we're sending it to specialists. One specialist like, listen, he needs to stop ASAP. I'm like, oh. He was like, it's gonna take six to eight weeks, but like, if he stops now, he can make it for the last few games and then playoffs. Mm. Um, because obviously I, I carried on playing, so he was like, if he stops now, he can make it, and then we sort of we sort of lost the automatic promotion because we were first, as I said. We sort of we drew, as I said, we drew five in five and six. Mm. So we lost, we lost automatics. Defo in playoffs, um, but lost automatics. So it was like, if he, if he stops now, he'll miss. He he will get back for the last few games and then playoffs and then. Cool. So we rest. I rested for for six weeks, just in the gym, gym, gym. Tried to run. First session, I'm like. Mm. Second session, I'm like, nah, this is this is not it. Um, went to go see a few more specialists. 
one specialist just said, yeah, like, Josh needs to stop mm. ASAP. If he carries on, it, it, could, it could be long for him. Like, mm. he could sh- worst case, he could shatter his hip or, or, do you know what I mean? And he'll be out for, however, who knows how long, so. Yeah. So it was like, cool. I sort of knew from then my season was over. Yeah, um, have to be real with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, you put like, up a good fight. Yeah, 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 I've literally put up a good fight. Like, <laughs> yeah. I played, I could five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten games on Kokoda Mall. Like, I'm trying to play, do you know what I mean? And like, but this one here is just, yeah, I, gotta, I have to think about myself. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, there is, I can't think about nothing if I can't play, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I've got to stop sort of thing. So I was like, okay, let's stop. Um, bro, I just had to. Do, I had to go in hospital, get injections. Mm-hmm. Do I'm in hospital for five days. Um, they're putting some some drugs in me to to help me heal. Done that about three times, um, but no op. So I'm buzzing. I'm but I don't care. Like you're only supposed to do this thing once. I went three times. I said no. Nah, I need to get back. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm I'm trying to. You know what I mean? I'm going. I'm packing my suitcase. I'm going for five days, bro. Like the the, the doc, the doc said to me, "Do you want to do it again?" After the first time, <laughs> the first time was horrid. Yeah. Like you get mad headache and you just feel like drained and that. I was like, yeah. The, after the second time, do because after we're having scans and it's getting better and better and better. Yeah, like, this is working. Yeah, yeah, it's now. working. He's like, do you want to do it again? He was like, no one's ever done it three times. Do you want to do it again? I said, get me in there now. Do you know what I mean? And obviously by the third time, I'm used to it. I know yeah. what to expect. I know how to manage it. I'm calm. And then, yeah, obviously, during this time, I'm seeing the boys playing the Prem. We had a very good start as well. The boys are flying. Obviously, first game of the season beat Arsenal. Getting back. And then yeah, by by November, I'm I'm back on the pitch. Like, like you you sort of have to when you're out for that long, you have to do like running mechanics and stuff. Like mm. they basically teach you how to run, sort of thing. Jeez. Yeah. So yeah, I'm doing all of that, and then yeah, by Jan, obviously I played I played uh, my first game back like behind closed doors, sort of thing. So yeah, it was um yeah, it was a long time, man. So obviously, I don't really want to go into the intricacies of the injury. But obviously it curtailed your season and you were out for a lengthy period. But mm. I think it's important because we have a lot of pros that listen to this platform and they always comment saying, listen, the part where X player speaks about the injuries is, is it touched me kind of mm-hmm. thing. So in terms of like the mental standpoint, yeah. obviously I know you've got a strong support team with Matt, Fab, mm-hmm. all of those guys. But from a mental standpoint, how difficult was it for you? Honestly, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't as hard as you think it would be. I think doing my hammy after was harder than doing this. I think because maybe I sort of knew I was gonna be out for time, and then I'm a I'm a strong believer in God, and if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And as you said, I got the support system of my my family and friends, and we got promoted. You know, and I think in these times you gotta look at perspective. Mm. I'm blessed, bro. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm blessed. Like there's kids all over the world don't even know where the next one's coming from, and they'll they they smiles from ear to ear. Mm. So, like, bro, it's, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like I, I I I've got everything I've I've wanted, really. So it's just like. Yeah, man, just roll with the punches, you know? It is what it is, like, you're blessed. Pray, spend time with your family. I'm on, I'm, I'm on the phone to Fab anyway every week, but, you know, just speak to people, you know, just let your emotions be known. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And, yeah, like, it, it, as a whole, honestly, it wasn't as hard. The hamstring, when I came back, started playing, and then done my hammy was way harder mentally, I think, but this... Like, as I said, maybe because I sort of knew, as I said, my family, God, us getting promoted, it was just a thing for me. It's just like, oh, life is good, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not, it's not the best situation, but yeah. life is still very good. So, yeah. Yeah, so in terms of your, let's say, Prem career, it's been maybe a bit stop-start. I would yeah. say of recent, like you're getting into a full run of fitness. Yeah. 
do you feel like you've always had to play catch up? So like Brentford got promoted and you're just, you know, chipping along, chipping along until you get to that point where, listen, I'm a bona fide week in, week out Prem player. Yeah, I think it's it's hard, man. And you don't, and I accepted it kind of late, not late, but like only maybe the last two, three months, like really speaking to my brothers and my agents, like when you're out for that long, yeah, you think, you know, you, you want to just come back and be the same player, you know, and it's, it's near enough impossible. Like when you're out for that long, you've gone from playing every single week, like you remember you, you like, you, you're sort of, I got to a stage where I'm sort of in like, um, my agent calls it the flow state. So you're literally mm-hmm. like, you know, you, you, you're playing and everything's just... Happening. Yeah, you know, just happening. Yeah. You're, in, you're in the state. You're so focused in, in, in on what's going on, you know, like, but when you haven't been in that position for a year and of course you're training, but in games it's, it's different. You, 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 you enhance a different sort of confidence. And plus we've gone to the Prem as well. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So it's just like, Getting back to it, you could always see glimpses, but it was never consistent. Um, I think only now, and even now, there's more to come. But I think only now I can, I'm, 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 I'm comfortable and confident in myself, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying myself, sort of thing. But yeah, like you're, you're, you're getting back and you're, you're doing things, and you just feel like you're getting frustrated with yourself because you're like, listen, I need to get back to that ASAP. You know, I've been, I've gone from starting every game, like no problem to like, oh, you know what I mean? And the thing is, I can understand why, why the gaffer's not playing me. So uh, we, we, I've got, we, we've got a good understanding. So it's not like I'm going to him. I'm just, and saying I need to play, but it's like, okay, I need to really focus and, you know, like get back to like, just, just mentally, and and just yeah, just get back into repetitions and do what I do well and, and work on what I need to do better and you know become a better player before I can start knocking on knocking on the door basically. And I think especially because it was last season and it was a sort of thing when I got injured again. It was like okay, let me just take my time and enjoy it. Just enjoy the experience. Like let's say we are in the Premier League again, like and we ended up being. Let me just enjoy these games and just be involved and, you know, just learn, basically. So was that the mentality in the first season? Like, let me just be part yeah, of the when squad. I came and back, let me ease yeah, myself yeah, even, in. Yeah. It's a new level. The club are to getting be fair, used to it. To be fair, though, to be fair, that was the case. But then I started killing it in training. And then, obviously, I got my first start against Arsenal away. Is it Arsenal? Yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. Blowing out of every, every blowing, <laughs> blowing, <laughs> and we got pumped. They were, they, they were, they were out. They were out it for us that game. Um, yeah, I think what that the was first the game was the first game yeah, of the season. Tony was like kick him out, and then were, the players done it. Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah they were, they were, um, they were out for us. And then, so uh, could you feel it? Was there like um, on the pitch, like they're making comments to you guys or how could you feel? No, 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 no. Just, just, just that, like, you know, when someone's on it, on it, like obviously to be fair now in the Prem, everyone's on it, man. It's crazy. But they just had the little certain, certain, like, mm, do you know what I mean? Like, just a little, yeah, yeah just a little spice. certain, certain, yeah. Spice. <laughs> it's sort of not like a derby, but like, you know, there's, there's a little certain there. Um, then I'll start the next game against Newcastle after that. And um, yeah, I get red carded. <laughs> I get red carded in t- in ten minutes. <laughs> so and it's funny, isn't it? Well, it's not funny because everyone thinks I'm a malicious sort of person. Right? <laughs> I know I've got yeah. I've got two red cards in it, yeah, but yeah. so everyone thinks I'm a like I'm uh, dirty yeah, or something. Nasty. But, <laughs> yeah, I'm nasty. <laughs> but if you actually look at the red cards, I, no, they are red cards. Like it was I, 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 I yeah, think no, to, like, no, no. But if you them. understand football. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think I should just have a one match ban. I should well not one I should just get sent <laughs> off and I can play the next game. Yeah. If you understand football, mm. there was no oh, So you think it should have been rescinded basically? Yeah. 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 Because I I had no intention of hurting the, the both of them. Yeah. Like if you really understand football, I had no intention. 
but they are red cards. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They're bad. Tell- like, <laughs> Hoiberg's <laughs> leg was. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. even both of them come up to me and said, bro, like, no worries. Like, okay. Do you know what I mean? Because the, yeah, yeah. they could, they knew, they understood. Um, yeah, so I've got the red cards. So imagine that's on a Saturday. On, on, on the Monday, I go into training. That last action of training, that literally last two minutes, do my hammy. Mm. I'm just like, oh. And bearing in mind, we have. We're more or less fighting a rele- relegation now. So we had we had Burnley, Newcastle, or Newcastle, Burnley, and someone else, all next to us. That Newcastle game's massive. I get sent off. Yeah. Then next and the next session I do my hand. Yeah, that's just that's couldn't catch a break, basically. <laughs> so I'm just like Yeah. If it's the best time to do my hammy, it's now because I got three. So imagine I had three matches. Two of them were before international break. Uh. <laughs> One of them was after. <laughs> so, so literally, um, yeah, I'm, I, yeah. So I, I, uh, I missed them. I only missed them three games. I think mm. I might have missed one more, but I know I think I only missed them three games. So it was sort of a good thing. Do you know what I mean? Especially the international break being in there, and then, yeah, and then that's when I sort of understood this one. To be fair, the boys started playing well. Obviously, Ericsson, yeah, Ericsson was amazing. Smoke, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Ericsson was amazing. And then that was just, okay, let me just enjoy. Let me just enjoy it, you know. But we're going to stay up. We look safe. Let me just enjoy it and um, mm. enjoy it and then take take it to next season. Yeah, so I want to fast forward. Obviously, we've been going on for one hour, 10 yeah, minutes already. Flown, flown. Yeah, no. Obviously, I've been asking for this one for like almost <laughs> three years. So I'm sure <laughs> Fab will understand. But... Um, in regards to this season, yeah, like when I look at your stats, completed dribbles in terms of percentage, number one in the Premier League, take ons up there with the top players in the Premier League in terms of a percentage. Yeah. How how would you analyze your season so far from an individual standpoint? That's a good question. You know, um, I would say it's been. It's been okay. It's been okay. Um, I've started half, I would say I've started just under half the games. So we played, what, 26 games? I think I've started 11, 12. Um, obviously, beginning of the season, I was a bit inconsistent. And that's what I'm trying to say. So when I, I know when I've played bad, I'm not going to go into the manager and be like, yo, I need to play. I know, you know what I mean? But obviously, you can see that in training, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving. So there'll be games where I'll play and I won't play. And I'm just... I'm just in and out the team, and then as of recent, I've um, well, now to be fair, I haven't started the last four games, but before that, I, I started maybe seven in the last 10, 11 games, and you know, I could just felt myself like mentally unlocking unlocking doors that are that have been there. Like mentally, there's certain things in your mind, like that that. You, you know when you're playing week in week out that confidence that you have that responsibility that you want to take on becomes more because you're playing more and you're doing well um, that little bit of arrogance you know and you know like I'm so I'm, I'm, look, I'm unlocking uh, doors like mentally in my head um, and then yeah and then obviously the last three games I haven't started so I would say as a whole it's, it's been it's been okay like it's, yeah it's been okay so in terms of you not starting games like what's been the reasoning from the gaffer is it other players are doing well or you need to improve yeah like it's, you see the gaffer yeah like he's such a good coach he's such a good coach so when when you take out one or two players and put them in we're still going to do well <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah, like yeah. obviously there's certain like it's, it's the thing is with the midfielders we all have something different there's none of us that are the same which is a good thing do you know what I'm trying to say? So there's strengths that I have that other people don't have. There's strengths that they have and I don't have. Do you know what I'm trying to say? But yeah, if you take out one, like remember we we, we didn't have Ivan against Liverpool. We beat them three yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're Liverpool. Yeah, fans, man, man, you had to remind <laughs> us about that one. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say? So like that's how like that's how well drilled we are and 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 good we are as a team, but. I'm obviously I'm my biggest critic. Well, Fab is as well. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm also my biggest critic, and like I, I know that I'm not where I want to be yet, but I know I'm on route. 
So what percent you know what would mean? you say in terms of how you're feeling? Like, where are you at right now? I would say maybe 70, okay. 70%. I think you only get to 100 when you're playing week in, week out. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're playing every game, you, you, you have that confidence, you have that aura about you. That, that's when you're 100%, you know, and you know, like, you just go on that pitch thinking, I don't care who I'm playing against today. Like, especially me, the way I play, I'm I'm going on the pitch, I'm running past someone. Mm. Like, I don't care who it is. Someone's getting run past or I'm, I'm shooting when, when it's when I'm, when I'm it's on site or I'm finding that pass. Do you know what I'm trying mm. to say? So, yeah, I was saying I'm, I'm about 70 and, you know, like, as I said, I'm happy with that. I know that I'm getting, it's, it, it's only going to go up, you know, like, so, I just got to, you know, you know how it goes, get so, back into training and so, work hard. So would you say that in the championship, you almost sort of felt like the main man, you knew yeah, yeah, that yeah. you're going to start the games, yeah. whereas in the Prem, I've looked at the stats, yeah. I don't think you've completed the 90 minutes. No. I haven't, you haven't completed no. the 90 minutes. I completed minutes. one, but I got taken off for the 91st. Yeah, so I saw that, I was like, Everton. <laughs> that counts, Everton, yeah. Everton, yeah. yeah. So I saw that and I'm thinking, hmm, like, how do you sort of feel the confidence to be you know, having your way in games yeah. if you're not playing those 90s. Because it must be difficult. There's no rhythm or I'm going to start this game, come off 63rd minute. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going to come off the bench, play 23 minutes. So yeah, how yeah. is that sort of psychological difference? Yeah, no, it was, of course it's hard, but it is what it is, isn't it? Like, you just got to take the opportunity when you have it. That's what it is. Like, you can't you can't moan and cry about it. There's obviously, unless that's, that's obviously something maybe me and the cafe have to have a discussion about, but you can't, what can you do? You mm-hmm. know, if like he obviously took you off for a reason, whatever the reason may be, good or bad, that he he's done it for a reason. So, yeah. It, but as you said, it is hard to build momentum. You know, when you're only playing like if you don't play a full game, like you never. If you get taken off for sixty minutes, you don't know what can happen in the last half an hour. Do you know what I mean? You could get a goal and assist. You know what I'm trying to say? Like of anything course. can happen. So, but that's just that's just what it is, isn't it? And then yeah, I just got to put my head down and, and make sure that. I give them the excuses, but that's at Brentford. We're so we're, we're so good with that, you know. Like I think you can see from our results and, that and how well we're doing. We always try and help each other, and you know, the team we had a, maybe as a few, last few uh, yeah, last few <laughs> games have been have been a bit tough on us, but I think we're having a, a, a very good season. To be fair, as a whole, no, because it's it's a funny one for me because like. I remember at the Etihad, he came up from yeah. the bench and absolutely ran riot. And having Tony scores the winner, yeah. you lot win at the Etihad. Should have got a third as well. That yeah, one cleared yeah, up the yeah, line. I saw your reaction. You were like, <laughs> how did that not go in? Yeah. Yeah, no, he messes me. He didn't care. <laughs> he said he should have scored. He didn't, he, didn't <laughs> care. he didn't care about no assist, yeah. <laughs> no nothing. He said, why did you not effing shoot? That was the first thing mm. he messaged me. Mm. But yeah, no. Yeah, so. But like, in terms of like from a confidence standpoint because you come on have a fantastic performance the next game i'll be checking my phone let me see if josh is starting josh is on the bench yeah. like from a confidence sort of standpoint what does that do to you uh not much as i said i feel like i'm i'm on route like i'm mm. getting to a stage where do you know what i'm trying to say and the re- the reality is and I'm gonna hold myself to it because I used to say it when I and when I was playing week in week out, the best players play. Do you know what I mean? So I need to find my way into that team somehow. Do you know what I mean? I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh, I'm moaning mm. at a gaffer. Do you know what I mean? I'm not playing. There's, there's obviously a reason. Do you know what I'm trying so to say? So do you know that reason though? You got. To, I got to talk to the gaffer when he comes back. For, for <laughs> 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 I mean, I got to chat to him, but. Yeah, like, unless you've, you've done something with his daughter or his son <laughs> or, I don't know, and I ain't got no time, so, you know what I mean? The best players play, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, trying to say? Yeah. Unless, so do you feel, unless it's personal or, so like, I've done something wrong, I ain't done nothing wrong. Like So, but, so I just need to apply myself, mm. you know what I'm trying to say? i got to make the most with what I'm getting given and make sure I'm doing what the gaffer wants me to do to make sure I play these games. So do you feel at this current moment you're one of Brentford's best players? Because in the champ, it was undeniable. You ask anyone, your name's getting put in top three at least. 
Yeah. As it stands right, do you think you're one of the best players in the... And this is not to discredit any of Brentford's <laughs> midfielders, yeah. but do you, like what you see in training and stuff, do you, do you think you are? Yeah, I do. No, I love I feel like That's I the only answer. Anyway. <laughs> I, I feel like, I feel like, honestly, I have to, like if I'm playing week in week out, I have the highest ceiling. Mm. Oh, I yeah. like that confidence, that's, and again, that's, that's, the, that's confidence. That's yeah. not arrogance. And I think yeah. to make it as a Premier League player, you need that confidence. You to have listen. to. Yeah. You have to. Otherwise, someone else is going to take your position, bro. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to believe in yourself. You got. You know what I'm saying? But as I said, it's not going to come easy right now. I started half the game. I started every game, because, and that's a, there's a reason for that. Talk so to I've got to go and uh, yeah, go work for it. No, I was gonna say, talk to us about Ivan Tony. Like he's having a incredible season for me. One of the best strikers in the Premier League. Yeah. How is he as, as a man? What a guy! <laughs> <laughs> what a guy! Yeah, we got we got a lot of characters um, um, in our change room, and the thing with Iv is that he can because he's come from League Two. And like he can dip into like he he's good with everyone you mm. know and he's 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 yeah, got in good two, banter. That, like Jack the lad culture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's where he's come from as yeah. well. So he's got good banter. Obviously, with the mandem as well, he's he's one of us. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm gonna yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. And the, but it's what I'm saying. He can mix him with everyone. So it's just he's he's a good character, good guy, and yeah. Obviously, you can see the work he's doing and and how. How important he is for for, for the team? Because mm, I checked the stats earlier. I saw Erling Haaland twenty eight goals, Harry Kane twenty one goals, Ivan sixteen goals. Yeah. Like, what do you think this guy's ceiling is? Because I see Man United and Chelsea being linked to I don't know Victor Osimhen, yeah. people in abroad. But I'm sitting there looking. What about Ivan? Like, he's doing his job. Yeah. You know, he scores penalties. He, he's a good link up player. Yeah. He's a physical output. He's a great outlet. He's got the speed. So, like, what do you think Ivan can sort of achieve in the game? Because sort of every level he's been at, he's dominated. Yeah. League one, dominated. Tick. Yeah. Championship, tick. Prem at the moment, tick. Could be England, tick. Yeah, that's I think it. he can take it to whoever he wants to. Mm. Whoever he wants to. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and that's it. Like, as you said, he's dominated in every sort of section he's been in, you know. And, and to see what he's been doing, I think the only thing is just consistency. He just needs to carry on. Not, not saying that he's been, like, Last season he got what 10, 12 goals. Mm. This season he's already on sixteen. Like it's only so long. <laughs> the next season if he gets fifteen plus again, okay, listen, like we have someone might just be like oh, we have to. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I don't want to say it because I want him to stay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I want him to stay, but it's like listen, because he's, he's he's showing that he can do it. Mm. So and and as people say, the hardest league. So. And as you said, it's just the way he's doing it, the, the, the type of player he is as well. Hold up play, pens, one or two free kicks, um, headers. Um, he knows where to be in the box. He's got that. He, he's a good finisher as well. Like any weird angles, like he's finishing. <laughs> you know what I mean? So and he's technically very good. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I think wherever he wants to take it, he can. He can go. Has he ever missed a penny in training? <laughs> Be honest. Yeah, he has. Ivan's <laughs> <laughs> gonna watch this. Yeah. <laughs> and he's but, gonna come on and we're gonna talk yeah, about he, that. <laughs> yeah, but you see with him, yeah, he's like mentally he's he's mm. up there. Like if he don't wanna miss, he's not missing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he, <laughs> listen, if he don't wanna miss, he's not missing. Like mm. I feel like he's impossible he's he's his penalties sorry are impossible to save. Yeah. Joke. Like they're impossible. Yeah. Like he waits for you. If you just stand still, he can just pull it like to the side of you and you're not gonna get there. Mm. If you go early, he goes to the other side. So and like as I said, the the, the patience and the the, the like He's got that confidence. Balls, you, you need like, to wait for the keeper to go. Like yes, yeah, it's, it's, he's missed one or two, but I don't care about those, to be honest. <laughs> I care about it on, on a Saturday. It's like Jamie Vardy as well. They've got that like lower league sort of <laughs> oh, Jack the Ladder now to <laughs> yeah. rile up the fans. Yeah, They're confident. Yeah, yeah, kind of yeah, 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 yeah. But I was going to ask that like, in terms of this season, you've had notable big wins, 4-0 mm-hmm. against Man United, mm-hmm. going away to Etihad, beating them. Mm-hmm. Liverpool, sadly, I've got to mention that. <laughs> For you, like personally, which one would you rank as like, your biggest victory this season? United. Okay, I oh, United or City? 
Okay, I know what Fab's you know, a United fan, <laughs> innit? So. Yeah, <laughs> were you bantering him after that game? Because I remember we were at like a party. That was August, no. innit? We were looking at the results. Well, you think like, he wasn't happy? I scored that game as well. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, he yeah, wasn't yeah, buzzing. You were taking it. Yeah, it was a horrible yo, mistake from David. Yeah, 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 there's, yeah, yeah. there's no rules, bro. There's no rules, man. Listen, if you ask him, should I score a hat trick against United? He will tell you to score everything. There's no rules when it comes to that sort of stuff, but. Yeah, I think them two, I think, oh, obviously going to Etihad and being- mm, That was mad. Mad, mm. bro, like mad. And then, but even, like, we're going into, we're going, we're, we, we're four nil up against United at half time. Everyone's just, I swear, we went into the change room, it was quiet. Like, what's going on? Like, kind of thing. But the like thing that. is, the, but the thing is, I promise you, everything we worked on the day before- What? came into fruition like it was mad like every single thing like, I remember one of the goals that we worked on um, when Matty we pressed we pressed Ericsson or something Matty won it scored like the counters Ivan Brian get up there um, set piece goal mm. everything we worked on like literally the way ev- like it was it felt like I was in training Jeez, mm, that's yeah mad. And again, you have to give credit to the tactical analysis yeah, team, no, no, Thomas yeah, Frank, yeah, he's you know, people top, behind the top, scene, like yeah. Lee Dykes, I know he's the technical director, yeah, I know yeah, him well, guy, he's yeah. a top, top guy. Yeah, so. top guy, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's just, uh, I think them two were, yeah, crazy. Talk to us about the gaffer, because um, he's done a fantastic job at Brentford, and for me, this is someone that's you know, deservedly going to get linked with the big clubs. Obviously, there's a lot of speculation yeah. at Tottenham with Antonio um, Conte's future. Has there been any sort of like reassurance that, look, I'm here to stay? Sign a new contract. He signed two new contracts in the last year. That's all I need anyway. <laughs> yeah. I ain't, you yeah. know what I mean? I don't need him to come and say, listen, guys, I'm going to... Bro, he signed a new five-year contract. So, obviously, there's probably ways that he can still go. Yeah, probably you know like I mean? release clauses. Yeah, and release pay clauses. Compensation but, and stuff. You know, I'm, 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 I'm sure that he's he's happy. He's, he's happy here because he's, he's signing a new five year deal. You know, so that's the, yeah. I think that's the reassurance that it, it, it gives us all. Yeah, I wanted to ask about him as an individual because in mm. front of the cameras we see like a guy with charming personality. Yeah. He's got banter. Etc. Yeah. He's sort of like the modern day manager in mm-hmm. terms of having that charisma. Yeah. So like behind the walls when the cameras are gone, how how is he? Exact same. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, exact yeah. same. Like he's comes into like he's like you can feel his energy. Yeah. You know when he walks into the room, like he's always bouncing. Like do you know what I mean? So obviously you you know speaking of um, contracts, um, to my knowledge, obviously your contract runs out in two thousand and twenty five. You're getting to the last sort of I would say eighteen months of your contract. Two thousand and twenty four, but there's an option, option for yes, you. Yes, yes, oh, exactly. you guys know. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for Brentford. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm good with Lee Dag. Sorry, I don't want to. <laughs> Has there <laughs> been like sort of murmurs or whispers about like potentially extending your stay at the club uh yeah there's been conversations but nothing like concrete on the table as of yet so but for me it's like i never really i'm never the one to to focus too much on that when obviously the opportunity comes and we have to then yeah but i'm never really the one to be like oh that do you know what i mean like i'm just i think you have to let your football do the talking sort of thing you know what I mean? And that sort of takes care of itself in a sense. Mm. So right now I'm just focused on, on what I have to do to to play as much football as I can and showcase myself. Mm, I think the fact that obviously they've got an option for an extra year gives you that bit of security. But in terms of you like signing a new deal, what sort of things would you be looking at? Because at the moment, obviously I know you said you're 70%, so you're still not 100%. Mm-hmm. But in terms of minutes, it's still been a bit fragmented. It's not mm-hmm. been like, you know, you're an important or you're a first team regular. Mm-hmm. It's more so you're a squad player right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I don't think you can, 
Well, I don't know if people have on their contracts, you have to play every game, you know. But I remember I on FM, I remember FM, there's that indispensable player, yeah, well, first team player, squad get that, rotation. I want to try and get that. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, I, know, I know there's such a thing as being promised that you're going to play in a certain position as Alex. Alex yeah, Sound, Alex, Alex <laughs> yeah, 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 but promise. obviously that's words. Bro, mm, that, uh, it's not contracted. <laughs> like, you, it's a sales like, pitch. Yeah, so if they put that in your contract, you can sue them. If you're not, if, but it's not in your contract. Promising someone, and that's where it's. Do you know what I mean? I'm mm. not too sure up in that situation, but mm. like obviously for me, it was just I just want to play, bro. Mm. I just want to play, and of course I know that's not gonna come easy. Like I can't just yeah I'll turn up and say I want to play. Like I'm gonna have to to work hard for it, which I'm willing to do. So I think that's just what I, I want. To be honest, I just want to play. That's it. Yeah. So just talking a bit about obviously like Brentford. Brighton and I would say Fulham have been the three overachievers so far this season. So what's the aims for the rest of the season? Because as we said, you went on like a mad unbeaten run, yeah. but it seems you've like hit a bit of a plateau recently in terms of results. Mm -hmm. So like what's sort of been the messaging in terms of internally about the aims and objectives for the rest of the season? Yeah, so the gaffer, he's always put, uh, um, he's always said like, it's all right to dream. Uh, it's all right to dream, but we need to work so hard for it, you know, and it's, it would be silly, enough, silly of us to let days go by or games go by where we think we can, or think we can win or we deserve a result because of how well we've done sort of thing. We've got to still work as hard as, as we've been doing. But literally and this is his message all the time just take every session and it's cliche you know everyone says <laughs> yeah. it no I honestly yeah, yeah. but like when you when you're actually in it and you and you understand like if you focus too much on two months you lose focus on the now the now do you know what I'm trying to say you lose focus on what can happen now so it's literally like how I see it is okay we've got a game Saturday just for this 90 minutes, I've got to leave everything on that pitch. Just for the 90 minutes, and I can rest after. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Then the rest will come. So for this 90 minutes, I say I've got training tomorrow. For this an hour and a half, or 50, where, however long training is, I've just got to give it everything. Then I'll go home and rest. Mm. You know, and that's sort of the energy that he puts out. Like, just work as hard as you can. Obviously, we'll have our days and whatnot, but generally, we're a good, good bunch of lads, honest guys, always want to work. So as long as we keep on top of each other as well, at like demand from each other, um, yeah, and then we, we'll see how far we can get. Last one from me on Brentford before we move on to our final part. Um, I think it will be, um, <laughs> yeah, a massive <laughs> oversight of us if we didn't mention the Brentford fans playing at that Brentford community stadium absolutely rocking on Friday yeah. night footballs. Mm. Yeah, that's Carragher. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Carragher yeah, yeah, yeah. and Neville, they have a jolly up when they go up there. But yeah, talk to us about the fans, man. If you had to send a message to them, what would you say? Yeah, the fans, I, I, I think now they understand how much they they help us. Like, the, the understanding of it is, is now, like, it helps crazy, man. And as you said, from the first game, if we played at Arsenal. Yeah. That set you know the mean? tone. Yeah, that set the tone. Yeah. So you know when I mean? you see Brentford Friday night at home, you know, you know it's you know peak. Right? Yeah, like, <laughs> I think we've only lost one game at home this season against Arsenal. Arsenal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that says something, you know. And you know, there's there's games where yeah, it's, it's going tough. But when you hear them, even away, bro, we played Southampton the other day. We heard them more than Southampton fans. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So the the fans. It's been 70, 74 years since we've been in top flight, so... Yeah, milking they're, it. Yeah, yeah, they're cherishing yeah. every moment and, you know, and yeah, we're cherishing every moment with them and we're enjoying it as much as they are, so... Yeah, they've been a big help and then the support is crazy and, yeah, got a lot of love for them. Mm, I want to talk about the fact that you are a winner. You know, you've won on the international stage, the European Championships yeah. with England. Yeah. Um, yeah, you've played with a lot of decent players. Obviously, Mason Mount was part of that group. Reese James. So, how was that experience tasting victory? Yeah, it was good. It was good. You know, I got like a, I got like a late call. That was my first like going away with an international group, and it was good. It was good to play 
obviously you play against these guys once or twice or even sometimes you don't play against them because you're playing at this age group and do you know what I mean it's mixed so it's actually mixing with the best in, in England um, it's, it's a good experience man like and yeah you just really you, obviously you, you you size yourself up a little bit against them like how far am I really off like how far am I or how close am I or am I ahead or do you know what I mean and you, and you get to see the, the, the guys qualities and when I do see them doing what they're doing now it's just like yeah as you could see it from when I trained with them or played with them so was Mason Mount always like a bad boy? Because yeah, now yeah, yeah. He's, he's, all, he's being linked with clubs because <laughs> no, no, he's, he's had like a contract situation. Yeah. So like, has he always been one where you knew this guy is destined for the top? Yeah, he's always been, he's always had his name being from young as well, from young when he was like nine and 10. He's always been, his name's always gone up with the ranks, but that's in full credit to him, man, because there's been so many guys that from nine and 10, their name has been, you know, yeah. and, they're not around no more. Yeah, yeah, do you know what I mean? Or not hit the heights. That, yeah. that, that Mason, they, that's what they've wanted him to do and he's gone and done it yeah. and proven himself. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? So full credit to him and on, on how hard he's worked. But What about Reese James? Because he's another one. Like, I've kept track, to, track of him since he was at like, Wigan and he yeah. had that successful loan spell. Yeah. When I watched him, I told Dot that yeah. this guy, he's yeah. an absolute problem. So it's mad. Like, when we went, we went to Euros, um, it was the first time I met him. And he wasn't starting and I wasn't starting. So we were training like the day after. And we was all on the same team. And I'm thinking, no, oh, this guy's a baller. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yeah. yeah, I'm like, this guy's hard. Like, but I mean, like we're, we're on the same team and like we're twosing and, and like he's strong, like robust, but <laughs> technically good as well. So yeah, me, yeah me, me and him, I think we shared a room that Euros as well. And um we had Taylor, yeah, that, that, that was funny to Taylor be Edun. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had we, Taylor was was a uh, room opposite. Um, yeah, but then you you realize how good these guys are, and then, as I said, when you see them playing now, you just think, yeah, I knew that was that, that was happening. And I played against him again um, in the champ when he was there, and he was killing it. He won. Yeah. I swear, he won that like, twelve man of the match. <laughs> yeah, he was. On, he was uh, we're gonna start, dominating. Yeah, home, yeah, yeah. He's won, <laughs> that, their home fans literally cherished him. And yeah, I don't wonder why. Like he was playing. You start the season at right back, they meant to send him in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. you know what I mean? And I remember playing against them, and yeah, he, I think he clapped me a few times. <laughs> <laughs> he clapped me a few times as well. Um, but. So, in terms of the right backs in this country, mm. there's always the argument about Trent, Reese James, mm. Aaron Wan Bissaka, Kieran Trippier, Kieran Trippier mm. Kyle Walker. Who would you put at that top three? I'll say. I think we. I think Carl Walker edges it over Reese. Okay. Yeah, just because of maybe of experience, mm. but I think Reese has got the best balance out of all of them. Yeah, in mm. terms of that defense and attack, because obviously yeah. with Trent, people you know about his attacking expert. Don't get me wrong, Triple is a baller, by the way. Okay. okay. He's yeah, a yeah. He's a, he's a big friend of the show. No, as well. he's <laughs> a, no, no. He listen, let me play them baller. Mm. But I just think like Reese is an athlete, isn't it? He's a monster. A monster, yeah. yeah like he's <laughs> built like a bridge. Yeah, yeah <laughs> do you know what I mean? He can bulldoze his way through. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. So, and that's something. Yeah, technically, uh, Chip is good as well. But yeah, Reese, Reese is. I think one or two years. I think he he he'll be starting. And last one. Talk to us about Arsenal because obviously you got ties to the yeah. club you've got a lot of friends there that you grew up through the ranks with not Eddie. anymore they've <laughs> yeah, only got uh, maybe two three left Reese, Eddie and, and Eddie Emil Smith and Emil right. yeah obviously I know Bukayo because of 21's England but yeah so yeah it's slow obviously because I had so many like when I when I left at 19 now it's been trickling down, down, yeah, down, yeah, down, yeah. down, down. <laughs> so, no. like it's one of those ones. Like when you see Bakayo, do you think yeah, this is the like best player in the Premier League this season? He's definitely top five, I think. Mm. Uh, and watching him live as well, sick, mm. sick man. And even just yeah, training with him and and playing with him, like he's he's top. Like the stuff, the thing is, he's just. You don't, you don't, he don't, what he does is not like wow, yeah. but he just does everything so right. good. Yeah, he's do you know what I mean? He's Efe a balance, so yeah. efficient, like yeah. you wouldn't, like he doesn't think, he doesn't do anything you're thinking, wow, like 
but he's just so good at it, like at everything. Do you know what I mean? Like the like when I'm watching football, I'm I'm looking at him as a winger, and I'm just thinking the timing of his runs, like the timing, like when Ben White touches the ball out of his feet, he's, the timing yeah, he takes yeah, to yeah. He, he knows when to <laughs> go drop to come and then short. go. Yeah, yeah, do you know yeah. What I mean? the timing. Like that's the stuff I'm looking at. Like obviously I know he can score goals. I know how good he is, but the little stuff I'm looking at. When Ben White's got the ball, where does he make his one? He makes his one inside. He takes the ball inside, then he goes and does his thing. Mm. You know what I mean? Little stuff like that. Like so, when you watch him, do you think that's world class? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm, I'm looking at it, and I think obviously, Arteta has a big, big role to play, and and because what I've clocked with them, they don't play. Say their fullbacks have the ball, they don't play their ball straight at them. They play it like inside, so they can mm. run onto. And when you look at back, like that's one thing he loves doing. Like when I'm gonna watch them, like. I always mention Eddie, get me tickets. I'm coming, <laughs> oh, no, listen. I'm, like, I'm coming to this game, yeah. yeah. And I just I just wanna watch, I wanna see how they play, I wanna see mm. like So for your personal like footballing education. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanna have an understanding like where, where there's where, where's Jack on the pitch. Like I'll do it with everyone when mm. I'm watching City, Chelsea, all the top teams, mm. I'm just like, okay, if I'm there, what, what am I doing? If Shaka said like, do you know what I mean? And like Bakayo's him and it, like the whole team like is flying, man. They're no. joke. I think they're the See, you know, you know, obviously Arsenal hardest team he played, but I think Arsenal edge it because they just they go and then go again yeah. and then go Relentless. again and then go again. Yeah. You know what it's I like mean? They like, knock you into submission. Yeah, <laughs> bro, like, it's mad. Yeah, I wanted to. Um, it's obviously like being a title race. Obviously mm-hmm. with City, everyone's got their own opinions. Mm-hmm. People are saying that Arsenal maybe they're gonna bottle it like last season with the top four. Others are saying no. That's the last season. Early days. Yeah, others are saying no. This Arsenal is different with them. Yeah. The mentality, it feels different. It mm-hmm. looks different, mm-hmm. etc. Other people are saying Man City, they're gonna pip them at the nose towards the end of the season because of that experience. For you, who do you think is gonna win the Premier League? I want Arsenal to win the Premier League. You know, uh, when I was I was speaking to Eddie, and I was like, listen, if you win the Premier League, you've actually won the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Not no like. Yeah, I played a few minutes here and there. <laughs> yeah, you know right. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, you've contributed to winning the Premier League, bro. Like, that's mad. Um, so I want Arsenal to win it, and that's just the question, isn't it? Obviously, I know football. I know experience is a big thing in football. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, as you said as well, it looks different. The mentality is mm-hmm. different. Everything's just different. So I hope that they can get to the to, to the final five games and like. They're still holding their own, yeah, but then yeah. that's when it really gets peaked. Do you know what I'm trying <laughs> yeah. to say? Obviously, like, your focus is Brentford, but are you like us fans watching? Yeah, yeah, I'm a, fan, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of football as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, a, I'm a football fan. Like, yeah. I love watching football. Like, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I'm it, it, even if it was Arsenal, Chelsea. Like, I'll be watching it, thinking this and or Arsenal or City, mm. or anything, any team, put any team <laughs> up there. I'm watching it, thinking how it's gonna pan out. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Mm. But City have that experience. Um, I think that's the only thing they have on Arsenal. But it's big. But yeah, man, it, it's going to be a crazy end, isn't it? And uh, yeah, I hope, I hope, I hope they can do it. Now, Josh, you've been absolutely fantastic. Very quickly, we want to talk about life outside of football. I know you love the game and you're studying the game all the time. But what does Josh do when he's not playing football? <laughs> um my sofa. Yeah, you just look chilled. Even the way you just sat, you're just calm. I'm on my sofa. Um watching watching football, watching animal programs. Um me and him love watching lions, hyenas, <laughs> messages each other. Um So you got that lions mindset. Yeah, yeah like just, yeah. just the way yeah, the way they carry themselves and the way they act and yeah, just it's just it's crazy interesting, you know. Like any animal programs, obviously we do, like we, like if we see a new lion show that we we haven't seen before, we'll send yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. just animal programs in general is just so insightful, you know. To mm. to, to know, um, what else do I do? Spend time with family and friends, you know. The man got out to eat from time to time. Um, yeah, I don't really do much, you know. I'm a bit boring, I can't lie. You don't mind your travelling because I know you went to Dam, obviously yeah, yeah, during yeah. the international break. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yourself, yeah. And that's what I need to do more. Yeah. I need to do that more. I don't travel enough. Mm. Not that I don't travel enough, but I just I haven't been to a lot of places without football. Yeah. Like, so it's like a work assignment. Yeah, yeah, like, I've been yeah. I've been Qatar, Singapore, South Africa, 
all over Europe. But it's all because of Arsenal, England, mm. Brentford. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I obviously want to go and experience other stuff with with family and friends. So I think that's the ones that I need to need to do more. But other than that, man, I'm. I don't. I don't know, bro. I think one day you should just come and chill and see how. how I, do. I <laughs> swear. definitely need to do a link. I don't really. <laughs> um, yeah, unless it's an occasion, I don't really go out. I just like chilling up. Friends' house, friends come to mind, just chill. I prefer that, you know, it's just mm. chilled and, I don't know, I'll probably watch football as well. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty chilled guy, to be honest. So, like, in terms of, I don't know, I always ask football, like, recently I've been asking about, like, yeah. like obviously you're earning good money, yeah. like, compared to the rest of the population. Yeah. So, how do you sort of, do you have any things in place to protect your wealth, whether that's property, I don't know, watches, investments, that kind of thing? Yeah, I'm in um, I'm in the property business. <laughs> <laughs> my guy, you know, fam. <laughs> so yeah, I'd, um, obviously properties is 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 obviously a big one. Um, stocks. To be honest, I just let my my financial advisor deal with all of that stuff. Of course, if there's opportunities that I want to go into, then I'll I'll let him know and you know. But I'm, I think I'm still at in in a in a stage a little bit where I'm just trying to home my, my skill you know yeah like, mm. do you know what i'm trying to say i'm still kind of still very young <laughs> fairly yeah, yeah like yeah, i remember yeah. when i was 19 like it was last two years ago now i'm 24 like it's, it's crazy i know but i'm still at the early stages i think so yeah obviously of course them ones are, are, are the mains but i think right now i'm just trying to focus um yeah get a new contract and <laughs> start over the other ventures yeah. as well but yeah, for now that's that, that's the ones that I'm I'm, I'm with. Um, let's say you're going on a date night with with someone, and you're going to Bagatelle. Oh yeah, I know you probably know that very well. Um, Don't say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the phone. That's the formula. <laughs> Don't say it like that. I've only been twice. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Like, what yeah. are you rocking? What are you rocking on date night? What's the drip? What's the outfit? Is it white oh. shirt? Sure. Nah. Um, you know what it is. Now recently, I've sort of <laughs> I got him watching me. He's obviously my bro's been telling me to dip my toe into that because I'm still not on the flares. Like, okay. do you know what I mean? I'm still like slim fit. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. still. I bought a pair of cargoes. They drop kind of hard still. <laughs> like. <laughs> so, but uh, let's say now, if I was to go. Um, I got a few nice. I'm, I'm in more into the sweatshirt vibe now. Like a nice jumper, sweatshirt, um, jeans, and then yeah, crepes. Yeah, like I'm not. I'm starting to get into my fashion a little bit. Like in terms of just not like I've always black clothes, of course, but I'm starting to like venture more and you know, yeah, just try maybe try me a few different things here and there. And, you know, see how it goes. Yeah, you're still very young, so you got that time for that experimentation. But yeah, yeah. we don't want to take too much more of your time because we're clocking in. This might be a yeah. record-breaking <laughs> podcast, yeah, to be yeah. honest, in I terms told, of time. I told you, man, I, I ain't going nowhere. No, I love, 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 bro. Man, this is it's all good. Yeah. Yeah, so in terms of, like, music, who you rocking with at the minute? Because right now we see Afrobeats dominating the scene. Yeah, no, Afrobeats is crazy. Amole, mm. doing cool. his thing, uh, Rima. Um... Obviously, my go to is Drake, Future. Um, you've got Pot of Paper, K Trap, yeah. um, <laughs> um, DBE. Bro, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of mixed. Yeah, yeah, mixed play, I'm yeah. A, yeah like, I've, Depends I've, on the mood. Bro, I'm not. I probably was my. Oh my brother, I've missed out <laughs> a few, a few names. You know, UK mm. and and American. Like I'm, as you said, it depends on the mood. You know, like when I'm before match day, I'm listening to gigs, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Come match on, day, yeah. Yeah. Match day, yeah. I'm listening to. That's gigs. who we grew oh, up on, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's our neck of the woods. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because of him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But old school gigs as well. Yeah, not like like on, old man. school. Walking walk the park, the, talking the hardest. Bro, are they is there? Are they, yeah, like, walking the park, man. Them, isn't Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they, no, some of them are even older, isn't it? Bro, like that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Obviously, because I, I didn't, but because I listen, so 
big on big on R and B, old R and B. Mm. Like obviously, remember I got two older brothers and mm. one older sister. So these guys are listening to all of these like all they're of these songs. You, yeah. you know early, what I mean? They're putting me on from early, <laughs> like Jagged Edge and yeah. all of these guys. Like, bro, like I'm in the shower, I'm singing off, bro. You know, I, I remember there's one time even I'm listening, I'm listening to one one I don't know one 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 slow tune, and one of my cousins because I think my brother and my cousin they're getting ready to go out. He was like, oh, don't play this around him, man. My boy's like, leave him, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Leave him, man. Let him, let him learn, <laughs> innit? Like how, because that's what they were banging, mm. obviously. And then that's how I know so much of it. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like, a few of my boys don't even know what these men are, like, who these men are. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Or what songs, like, genuine, like, bro, I know. Now it's just all about the little babies, and that's mm. what they care about. Yeah, but, about, it's, but it's not their fault, though. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's just that, like, luckily, I got two older brothers and an older sister, and they listen to the, that sort of music, and I'm. I'm really in tune, like, bro. We went Chris Brown the other day, bro. I was singing I, bro, every song. I can't remember his performance, bro. I'm just there, bro. I remember this. I, didn't get the I remember, bro. Used to bang, bro. Used to bang forever, yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. When that song came on, gee, you should have seen the way we reacted. Yeah, mad, like, mad. I didn't even watch the performance, bro. I'm just, bro, I'm just jumping with him because this is the song that we used to like. Yeah. When he used to drive me, bro. One time he had a Nissan. Bro, Nissan he used to drive me to training. I'm nine years old, bro. Yeah, yeah. Drive me to training, he's banging forever in the car. Yeah. And then now we're at Chris Brown's concert. So it's like nostalgia. It's yeah. like look bro, crazy, crazy oh, nostalgia. Bro, yeah, crazy, bro. Crazy, crazy, nah, crazy. He's, crazy, a, he's so. a legend. Mm, what I wanted yeah. to ask finally is obviously, um, as we're coming to an end, what's the aims and objectives for you, like within the next twelve to twenty four months? What do you want to be achieving? Um That's a good question. I haven't thought that far, but yeah, I just I just wanna keep on improving. I think that's the main thing. Just keep on improving, becoming a better player and a better person. Um, but yeah, I think just in terms of football, as I said, just play, play as much as I can. Um, yeah, and just as it, like you look back and. You, not even look back, but you understand that you're only here for a short amount of time, you know, so just make the most of it. So that's what I'm going to try to do, man. I just want to play, enjoy my football, enjoy life. Like, And you got to remember, football's just, you know, it's a big part of my life, but there's more to life than football, yeah. you know what I mean? Oh and as God. I said, like, sometimes you can, you, you need to take things into perspective, not all the time, otherwise I don't think you can get to where, like, if you think, always think, oh, it's going to be okay because... Of course, like I, I know I can fend for myself, and do you know what I mean. But it's just like no, I wanna, I wanna play at that top level. Yeah, like yeah, do you know what I mean. I can't always be satisfied and just be like, oh yeah, it's okay because my family are healthy. And no, I wanna play, bro. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, I wanna strive to be the best I can be. So I think that's just where where I wanna take it at the moment. I think everything else will take care of itself. But I just wanna focus and uh, hone in my skills and. Yeah, and improve. No, my bro, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. It's yeah. been a fantastic interview. You've been open. I love your journey. I'm going to be following your career. I appreciate so, it. Like, Thank you. We've got a closing tradition on this podcast where we ask the guest that's been grilled by, by <laughs> us. Um, grilled, and interviewed. <laughs> grilled and interviewed to recommend a potential guest in football that would be a good fit for this platform. So if you had to think off your head, who who would you recommend? <laughs> you know what it is? I'm, put, um, I'm thinking about people, mm. then I'm thinking about their personalities and how they would do because um, some people... Yeah, no, you're right. It's, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, some people... That. Like you won't get a lot from like Rico. <laughs> you're not gonna get a lot from Rico. <laughs> He's yeah. one that we've. I speak to yeah. these guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, like Rico. He he doesn't really fancy an interview. I'm not gonna lie. Like he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's not keen. But his story is good. Mm. Matt, like crazy good. Come from like you know if you do background check. Yeah, out for a year. It. yeah, yeah Smith, Walsall, Dean Smith done it. Was out for a year. Came back playing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Plays every game, but. Yeah, he's just he's, uh, that one. Yeah. Maybe I'll send this to his guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to do it. Yeah. Um, Esri Konza. Okay. Yeah. yeah oh, Esri and you Konza. can help with that one as well. 
Yeah, I try my best. It doesn't mean he's gonna say yes. Yeah, 100%, yeah, yeah, but yeah, of course, 100%. But, and we accept that though. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's bro right there. Like that's that's oh, okay. like as we we're like we're literally we we got the same birthday. Yeah. So we we're, oh, we're a year apart, but same birthday. So like we're literally the same. Yeah, yeah we're literally the same. So whatever you got from me is what you'll get from him. I think anyway. So. Yeah, do your best in it, and uh, try. Try, <laughs> try, 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 try putting my word in no, it. I love, and, love, and, just, <laughs> love, love, love. Dead, any closing? No, thoughts? just thank you very much. I think this is the longest pod in in TBG history as well. Mm. Two hours plus, but yeah, yeah you've been, been a, a great guest. You've been open, transparent. Yeah. And as we said, we're going to be following your journey closely, mm-hmm. as we are already. So like, big up and love to bro as well for, yeah. for rolling. No, I appreciate love. it. Thank you very much. No, we appreciate it. It. So we're gonna leave it there. That's another episode of the Beautiful Game podcast. Look, man, two hours with a Premier League footballer, and people are not subscribing to the channel. Yeah. Like it's crazy. <laughs> like the video. Subscribe, Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're gonna leave it there. Over and out. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was quality, bro.